Hello and welcome back to this Temple of Vista Crusade. Uh, this video will actually be going over some really great uh, video titles that have been uh, just randomly in some of the local stores. Uh, they had a number of collections uh, and I think some came from estate sales that got traded in. Uh, so these are all actually just uh, DVD and Blu-ray for the most part that uh, I picked up because uh, they also had a number of store sales and sidewalk sales and things uh, which they do Pretty, pretty regularly. I uh, haven't done really a lot since the pandemic started, but uh, they do a really great job at doing those. So they put a bunch of stuff out on the sidewalk for a quarter or 50 cents, uh, but they had some really massive collections get turned in. So all of a sudden I started seeing a whole lot of uh, blue spines and I'm like, that 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 doesn't look like the usual you know dollar bin dvd stuff and then i said looked closer and saw more and more and more so they had uh, one particular collection that's been traded in that is primarily uh, much more in my wheelhouse with a lot of classic titles uh and apparently did come from an estate sale but uh, there were a lot of MOD DVDs, which meant that I saw a lot of Blue Warner Archive MOD DVD spines and started to just have my eyes completely pop out of my head. So uh, there's there's so many here, and I really only cherry pick some because um, they they did realize in their pricing that some discs were out of print, so uh, some discs were priced significantly more than others. So I focused more on the titles that were, you know, definitely bargains for Warner Archive titles. A number of these are ones I've been meaning to pick up for ages. Uh, I've just never really gotten into the MOD DVD side. I've always been focusing more on the Warner Archive Blu-ray side because those are all new scans, and every time they had a sale, you know, it's much harder to get, uh, you know, to think about getting an MOD DVD when you could be getting another new uh, Blu-ray from a fresh scan. So uh, again, just there's so many of, of these titles that were just in the store sales that I have enough to make a whole video about. So I figured why not share this with you guys. So starting with this, this was a stunning surprise this was in there. So this is definitely uh, the one I did not expect to ever see in a bargain bin. So this is the Forbidden Hollywood Volume 5 set from Warner Archive. Of course, this started out on DVD with the first three volumes in the fancy boxes, uh, then switched to Warner Archive. So these are still presenting fantastic uh, pre-code gems that really haven't had a, a large video history. But what's great about these and what I hadn't even realized is that all of these are actually on pressed discs. So this is one of the handful of Warner Archive releases on the DVD side that uh, these are not DVD-Rs. These are actually pressed disc titles. So I had not realized this at all. I'd had these on my wish list for ages, but uh, again, it, that makes me really much more excited to get some of these. And uh, I probably need to get... Uh, the uh, Warner Archive reissued the first three volumes uh, because they had gone out of print, so they reissued them under the archive label. But uh, unfortunately, my copies of one and two have the dreaded Warner uh, disc rot issue, so I probably will have to get the archive reprints because my uh, regular versions, even though they have the fancier boxes, uh, unfortunately the discs are shot um, because that is from the affected time period of the Warner Brothers DVD rot issue. So um, they've now done at least, I think, volume six as well. Uh, I'm not sure if they've done seven yet, but I really need to get the other ones. All of these are great titles, uh, usually focused on at least getting titles from some of the big stars. So this has, you know, a Cagney picture, has Barbara Stanwyck picture. So it has the films Hard to Handle, Ladies They Talk About, The Mind Reader, and Miss Pinkerton, and uh, all from some of the great directors of Warner Brothers and classic Hollywood in general, uh, from Lloyd Bacon, Royal Ruth, uh, Mervyn Leroy and the horrendously underrated William Keeley. So uh, I've seen one of these before on TCM. I, I may have seen a chunk of some of the others, uh, not for certain, but I've been wanting to get this ever since the, uh, the since it was released and I read the disc reviews. Um, so could not believe this was in there. So moving on with the other standalone titles, again, this is a mixture of titles I haven't seen in a long time, saw on TCM many years ago, or uh, titles I've always wanted to see. This one is uh, one of those I've always wanted to see, never gotten the chance to, uh, but now I'll get to thanks to the Warner Archive MOD service. So this is actually a Michael Curtiz direct feature, uh, interesting because it reteams uh, Bill Holden with Nancy Olson the year after Sunset Boulevard. That's the picture Force of Arms. So this is 1951. Uh, uh, it's a wartime romance with the two stars of Sunset Boulevard the year after. 
So just the typical Warner Archive MOD DVD layout and everything. But again, not, not a super common title. Wow, that I just literally threw. But again, amazing to find titles like this in the local shop. And plus they had a sale going. So, uh, you know, getting Warner, uh, Warner Archive MOD DVDs for, you know, like two bucks each. That's, that's crazy. So <laughs> that's why I bought a whole stack. Next up is a picture directed by Raoul Walsh. This is actually a remake of an earlier picture that he did uh, with Cagney called The Strawberry Blonde. So this is the musical remake, One Sunday Afternoon, uh, with Dennis Morgan and the wonderful, well, always wonderful Dorothy Malone. Uh, again, never been a giant musical fan, but I'm getting more and more into classic musicals. I have seen The Strawberry Blonde, but I haven't seen the musical remake. And again, it's you know, Raul Walsh, and it's still sealed, so that was a no-brainer. So the next three are all Errol Flynn titles that have been on my wish list for ages, uh, just like all of the uh, stars and directors who got the uh, Signature Collection DVD box sets during the DVD heyday. Uh, there are still uh, so many other titles that they did under the Warner umbrella, uh, because, of course, that also includes MGM and RKO now, uh, that never got a DVD release in a box set. They didn't do, uh, you know, some got a Signature Collection Volume 2, but not about, usually not a Volume 3. So uh, with Errol, there's, there's many other films that uh, a good number out in the archives. So I picked up three of them. Again, these are all titles I've meant to get for ages. So starting that off with the 1937 picture Greenlight. And again, I haven't seen this in so, so long. And then the really fun picture that's one of the uh, Flynn de Havilland vehicles. This is the one that's not really in any of the box sets. So this is Forza Crowd, which it's great seeing Errol doing comedy because he was really great at it and rarely got the chance to do it. So everybody shines in this picture. Show you the back. And then from the later part of Errol's career, this is 1949. This is That Foresight Woman, which is based on the book The Foresight Saga, which has been adapted uh, several different times. Show you the rear. And then the rest will just go in chronological order. Uh, just couldn't believe these were in there. Again, I just I picked out all of the um, the more cheaply priced titles, and I'm definitely going to go back and see if I can get some more before uh, the rest of them get picked over. But uh, picked up the 1933 picture directed by Sam Wood, which is Hold Your Man, which is a Gene Harlow and Clark Gable vehicle. There are many great Gable films and Gene Harlow films available from the archive. They've even done a Gene Harlow box set of titles. I don't think this one's in there, but that one I think has seven uh, MOD titles. Uh, this is another one. There are others, so they could easily do a volume two, uh, just as they could do a volume of the Errol titles and the Clark Gable titles. And there's still so many other great star vehicles that are um, on other archive discs or not even available yet. Uh, and a lot of these titles didn't necessarily even even get you know VHS and Laserdisc releases back in the day so uh, it's always amazing to be able to get more into the catalog get really deep in there and these are of course titles that uh, will always pop up on TCM that you really want to see but are always at that you know two o'clock in the morning on a Wednesday time slot where you just are not able to watch it but uh, always happy to chip off more great star vehicles just in case I didn't show the back Next up for 1938 is The Citadel, with two of my favorite stars of the Golden Era, Robert Dinaud and uh, Rosalind Russell, who I've had a, a lifelong crush on ever since I saw His Girl Friday as a kid, and I'm not afraid to admit it. So this was Oscar-nominated, and it's basically blending uh, a medical, true-to-life film with a romance, because you always have to have romance in a classic Hollywood film. So um, I've never gotten to see this. It was directed by King Vidor, and it just looks fantastic. So this is definitely up at the top of my watch pile now. And it's still sealed. I, that, I was just amazed. So there were a number of these that were still sealed. And then, uh, again, I just kind of cherry-picked the ones that were uh, priced more cheaply. And I'm going to go back and, <laughs> and chip away at more while they're still around. Next up for 1954 is a film I haven't seen in a very long time. Very happy to have the uh, Warner Archive release now of Green Fire, which is Grace Kelly and Stuart Granger. Uh, this is definitely tying into the MGM early 50s adventure films that all starred Stuart Granger. Uh, Andrew Martin directed this, who did all of the second unit on the Ben-Hur chariot race. Uh, so this basically fits right in with the uh, MGM 1950 King Solomon's Mines and uh, Scaramouche and uh, the version of Prisoner of Zenda they did with Granger. So if you've 
ever seen any of those, that's that's sort of the wheelhouse this is in. And uh, of course, you have one of you know Grace Kelly's starring vehicles as well. Lovely release, gorgeous art. Uh, definitely a title that could have been in a signature collection box set that just never happened. So thankfully, we have the archive collection. Now this next one's a bit of a, a bit of a curio. I've heard about it, I've never seen it, and its reputation is pretty terrible. But just the idea of and how this is always described just sounds so appealing. And for two dollars, you know, for a MOD Warner Archive DVD, I, I couldn't resist. Uh, so this is the 1970 picture. Dirty Dingus McGee, which is a Frank Sinatra comedy-leaning Western, but uh, apparently this is the reputation is so poor, and everybody always claims that Sinatra just shows up in a Western and just kind of phones it in. And this was actually the last picture he made for a very long extended period of time. I actually think it's the next last picture he ever made. Uh, so apparently this just didn't go well for anybody involved. It does have its fans. Uh, there's actually a pretty decent blurb from Leonard Malton on the back. So I don't know. Maybe there is some redeeming value to this, but it just it just seemed interesting and such a, a mix bag of ideas and concepts it was directed by Burt Kennedy who did a number of you know great westerns of this era so I don't know it just ap appealed to my sense of the bizarre and uh, even though it has a terrible reputation just the idea of Sinatra in a western uh, appeals to me so this was you know definitely in my hands in the store and then last for the Warner Archive disc this picture is from 1971 never gotten to see this and i'm really trying to go through and see all of the uh, robert mitchum films that i haven't seen seeing as i've been a, a mitchum fan ever since <laughs> ever since i first came across him as a kid uh you know you see out of the past at a young age and that's one of those uh life-altering experiences so warner archives done a number of the uh harder to get uh, Mitchum films and television films as well because he did a number of really highly regarded television dramas in the uh, 60s and 70s but uh, this is from 1971 it's the MGM picture Going Home uh, which apparently does have sort of a Night of the Hunter vibe because the the, the basic idea of the story is that uh, Mitchum uh, Mitchum's character winds up killing his wife and his young son testifies against him in court and then years later he gets out and he's living with another woman and his son shows up and you know tensions escalate from there again i've never gotten to see this uh mitchum is highly praised for for the, his role in this film as he should be in practically everything because he's always great and incredible um so this is just me chipping away another one of these uh just like trying to get all the errol flynn titles from the warner archive really trying to get all the mitchum titles i'm still really uh well not just mad at myself but it's still really frustrating that uh the great uh masterpiece the lusty men the nicholas ray picture that mitchum is in uh that got a warner archive dvd release and then that went out of print like immediately thereafter uh it was restored by the film foundation so i've been hoping that comes out on blu-ray but no one's said anything there's been no news on it so i finally went out and picked up the laser disc um that disc is actually uh included at the store they've got a copy in this lot that was traded in but it's you know got that nice out of print price sticker on it with the accompanying price tag so that disc is uh very very pricey now um and of course, Warner Archive discs, they're all uh, MODs, and so they're uh, burned to order, no extra features, and primarily using pre-existing uh, video masters or uh, you know masters made for broadcast if there was no VHS or Laserdisc release. So sometimes I, you know, if uh, on a title like The Lusty Men, since the Warner disc is out of print, I went and tracked down the Laserdisc, but uh, some, for the most part, uh, if you get the laser disc, it's usually going to share the same master if it's one of these uh, MOD DVDs. So sometimes I just go ahead and do that. Uh, sometimes it's actually a bit cheaper. Uh, but now that I'm really starting to tiptoe my and dip my feet into the waters of the of uh, trying to build more of a uh, Warner Archive DVD library, uh, this this was just fantastic to get that started. And on the standard DVD side of things, I've got a two or three interesting pieces I wanted to show you guys. Uh, this one, uh, since we're all really kind of getting nostalgic for the snapper case, which is kind of bizarre to think of since we all complained about them all, uh, all these years and how they didn't fit on a shelf, how they were annoying. Well, now uh, myself, like a lot of other people have said, I kind of got nostalgic for them. You know, they had nice art, and when they're in good shape, you know, they're sturdy enough, they protect the discs well, and 
the interior art and the way that they fold out is sort of reminiscent of a laser disc jacket in ways. So it, it is a way of having more art than your just traditional Amore case. So, uh, and of course, these are all primarily, you know, going to be early uh, run DVDs. So I saw this one sticking out. This is one I picked up simply because it was cheap, uh, has really nice art, and I'm always trying to compare transfers on certain films, and the Hammer Horror films are no exception. So when I get the chance to pick up a particular version of a movie for, you know, a dollar or 50 cents or sometimes 25 cents uh, at certain stores with really large bargain bins. Uh, I definitely just go ahead and, and grab it because I'll, I'll never see a disc that cheap again, uh, you know, especially as long as the surface is okay. So this was a surprise sticking out in one of the bins. This is the 1998 Snapper Case DVD debut of the Hammer Horror film Kiss of the Vampire. Really lovely art. They did use this, I believe, uh, the Laserdisc was a double feature, so it had this in a you know smaller um, box on the jacket. And they used this for the VHS as well, but it just looks really impressive. Uh, just, <laughs> it was worth 50 cents just for this, this cover. And you can see here, this is 1998, so this is still pretty early for a DVD, seeing as DVD really didn't take off until 1997. So this is also an early catalog release. That wonderful classic snapper case snap. And this was universal, but of course pressed by image. So get their logo there. Pretty simple looking, uh, you know, for the actual disc label. That sort of holographic look of most early DVDs. And you do get some art here, which is nice. So even if you're just a fan of a particular film and you stumble across one of these early snappers with nice art, uh, even if you don't need it, uh, you know, you can find these for dirt cheap now. And eventually, I'm sure, uh, with people getting more nostalgic for these, there might be some collectors who try to just buy nothing but snapper cases and then drive the value up. But this was just a no-brainer. And with Hammer Films, I'm always curious to research different transfers. So if I ever see a, a Hammer version for cheap that I haven't looked at yet, I'm definitely going to try it out. Uh, this doesn't have any extras. Uh, it is 166 and it is widescreen, of course, and it actually credits it as having a PCM mono track on here instead of a Dolby digital track. So that was really interesting. I don't know if that's correct because uh, the DVD standard was for uh, Dolby Digital, but uh, as this is an image and this is pretty early, uh, it very uh, very well may be. So that, that made it doubly important for me to pick up. This next one I also picked up because it was literally dirt cheap and I have most every other version of this film, and I always do comparisons, especially on the audio track. And uh, I'm, I've am i always wondered, I've always figured this first DVD special edition was probably uh, porting the big Laserdisc uh, collector's edition box set, which was a late release and pretty tough to find. And so I see this sticking out for less than a dollar, and it's in this really fancy packaging, and I was like... Was this put here with my name on it? It kind of seems like it. So this is the two-disc original collector's edition of Close Encounters of the Third Kind. This is the wonderful, deluxe, slightly foil-looking, holographic-looking, uh, you know, exterior box art. And this is the full-on deluxe fold-out slipcase. So I couldn't believe this was priced as cheaply as it was, but there you have it. So not only is this slightly shiny in that foil sort of way this is an actual slip case and then the title is embossed still has the collector's sticker imprinted on the case there and then the actual slip case is just gorgeous i mean this you know again dvd really did have fantastic packaging it wasn't you know killing your discs it didn't uh you know destroy your shelves it still fit on shelves but this one's a bit of a weird one because it opens in a strange way i'd seen this before but i'd never owned this particular version so uh you open it like a traditional fold-up digipack lovely liner notes again I've printed in the style of the film but then the actual disc hubs open Trying to do this on camera. So you have this, but then the actual discs are here. So again, very uncommon in terms of the layout, but that does make it, you know, feel kind of special. Uh, disc one is the uh, third version of the film, the um, 
it has different names. So it's basically known as the director's cut or collector's edition cut of the film. That's the third version Spielberg prepared in the mid to late 90s. Uh, so this doesn't include the 1980 special edition or the theatrical version from 1977. Uh, we wouldn't really get all three fully restored to disc until the 2007 Blu-ray. Uh, this does give you Dolby AC3 5.1, DTS 5.1, and Dolby Surround. And then Disc 2 has all of the extras. So pretty much this replicates what we got on the Collector's Edition Laserdisc box set that is very rare and took me many years to find. That has AC3 and Dolby Surround as well. So this basically gives you all that in a nice digipack and adds a DTS track. So I am definitely going to throw this in and do some more comparisons because uh, I've always always compared Close Encounters audio because it has the really uh, potent uh, bass track, particularly during the Mothership sequence that uh, a lot of people have always said it hasn't sounded as good since the original 1977-70 uh, millimeter release. Um, so and it's rumored the 97 Laserdisc box set was mastered from that as its audio source. So very curious if this is the same as well. And again, for less than a dollar in perfect condition, I, I couldn't believe this was just sitting there. The only trouble is it's kind of difficult sliding this on and off because <laughs> it opens from the side. And then since I've already talked about snapper cases, sealed discs, and out-of-print films, uh, this is actually one of all three. So this, I could not believe it was in there. Again, this this collection that had been traded in really ran much more to my taste. And uh, I couldn't believe this was still sealed. So this is a film I've only seen, uh, I believe I've seen it twice, I've never been able to own a copy. I think the Warner Archive has reprinted this at some point as an MOD disc, but I'm not for certain. Uh, but this is the original Snapper Case release of the John Frankenheimer picture, The Gypsy Moths. This also includes a Frankenheimer audio commentary. Uh, this was made in 2002, so it was when Warner was still using Snapper Cases for a little while and on a lot of catalog titles. So again, this is literally still sealed. So let me go ahead... Or all that 2002 shrink wrap goodness. And of course, Tiles of the Sarah, I even had the Warner Brothers logo on the shrink wrap itself. Another part of snapper cases that I don't miss is, of course, they used gigantic, uh, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but they used gigantic uh, stickers on the edges to, you know, make sure you didn't rip the case open. So now I got to try and peel these really thick uh, plastic stickers off. You always have to do them in order because they're always, uh, you know, above one another and put on top of one another. So I've just spent the past few minutes trying to get all the stickers off, and I remembered very much how much I hated unwrapping snapper cases. Uh, you have to peel the stickers off very carefully, and as you'll be able to see, no matter what you do, sometimes they just decide to be an asshole. So here it is, and as you can see, it did take off some of the front cover because, of course, these are cardboard. But I think this had gotten dinged up in the years since it had been sealed, so it was already like you know permanently attached there. But anyway, uh, and always the sticker on the side with the security device enclosed bit, it always comes apart in pieces as you try to <laughs> take it off. So again, kind of nostalgic for snapper cases, not nostalgic for actually opening sealed ones and getting all the stickers off. And to show you the inside opened up. Again, this is a really underrated film, as are most of Frankenheimer's other films outside of the most famous ones like Manchurian Candidate and Seven Days of May Grand Prix, uh, to just, just to name a few. Um, and as he always did, or at least tried to, uh, he did record an audio commentary for the DVD release. And this is probably one of the last ones he did, uh, just from the age of the disc itself. Uh, it does include a vintage uh, behind-the-scenes piece as well, in addition to the trailer. Uh, and again, just a Warner catalog title that was still using a snapper case. Then on the Blu-ray side of things, this is one I'd been meaning to get for ages. Finally found a cheap copy, and it was so cheap I couldn't pass it up. Uh, I love what Anton Corbin did with The American, which is one of my favorite modern films. So this is the picture he did afterwards, which is A Most Wanted Man. 
Uh, this is actually the last picture that Philip Seymour Hoffman did before he died, uh, and it's based on the John Le Carre novel. So this is a great film if you haven't seen it. Great cast. Uh, if you liked The American, you've probably already seen this, but uh, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> I shouldn't say fun. This film is not really fun, but it's 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 very well made, very dark, very gritty, uh, and you know, right out of the world of Lucari. Uh, it's a universal Blu-ray, so it's in their standard format and style. Uh, doesn't include a DVD, but you do get some nice extras. And again, just been meaning to pick this up for a long while, pretty much ever since I first saw it. Then uh, also, again, in this massive um, estate sale lot that popped up in the local store, they had this, which is a title I've almost gotten before, then the supplies seem to dry up. It's never gone officially out of print, but I have it on DVD and Laserdisc, and so I've just always been meaning to get the Blu-ray when it pops up on sale, then always miss out when the sale ends. But uh, this actually still has the original slipcase, which I was stunned, so this was dirt cheap. So picked up the Blu-ray finally of From Here to Eternity, from uh, Sony, from their restoration. It does include a really nice audio commentary, the making up from the DVD. Uh, the 5.1 remix is in lossless audio, and then it thankfully does still include the mono, but I believe it's a lossy track. But yeah, I was really surprised to still find it with the nice uh, shiny foil type slip cover, which again, most of the times uh, for these particular Blu-rays, you know, the slip covers only lasted like, you know, two seconds. And then amazingly, the actual disc itself was still sealed, so that made the deal even sweeter. And because it's Sony, it has the little hinge on the actual opening of the case itself. Really nice disc and booklet. It's one of their really great catalog presentations that doesn't cost an arm and a leg, but unfortunately just isn't carried everywhere all the time. And then very lovingly, they, on the reverse side of the sleeve, they give us the close-ups from the iconic beach scene, which uh, if you've never seen this film, you do know this scene. It is one, it is, you know, one of the most iconic uh, romantic moments in films and probably the most iconic, uh, I'm trying to think of the right term, I guess, just call it what they used to back in the, back in the old days, the clinch moment where the the guy and the girl have the climactic kiss either at the uh, great build-up scene or at the climax and final fade out and stuff uh, but when Burt Lancaster and Deborah Carr have their uh, romance on the beach and the waves start crashing in black and white it's just one of those moments you don't ever forget uh, unfortunately they they don't use that they they I mean they use it but they mix in other stuff and they colorize it. Um, this is one case where I really do like the Laserdisc jacket because they literally give you that in black and white without a bunch of other stuff going on. Um, but still, it is nice art, but I wish they would have just gone with what everybody remembers. I'm oh, sorry I misspoke earlier. This isn't a booklet, but it's actually a nice, thick, glossy cardstock reproduction of original lobby cards. So, But it's folded up as if it were a booklet, so that's why I thought it was a booklet at first. But it was nice of them to do that because it's not common that you get actual inserts on um, catalog releases, even Sony ones. Uh, usually all their money goes into the new scan and the encoding and stuff. But uh, thankfully that means the discs themselves are pretty cheap. So uh, again, I've always meant to pick this up. It's just not stocked as often as some of the others that they did uh, you know, with similar Blu-ray releases. And then every time I meant to get it in a sale, it sold out or the sale was over and I missed out on it. But I'm um, glad I have it now, and it's really cool to have it with the slipcase, which, again, did not expect to find one of these uh, with the slipcase still on it. Next is a disc I got from a seller online. Uh, it's an upgrade title I've been meaning to get for a while. I have the uh, Kino Lorber version, but this is one of their Wilder titles that uh, somebody else did and really did a better job on the encoding, and I like the art better and everything, so I finally picked up the Masters of Cinema release of the Masterpiece 1961 film 123 uh, with James Cagney, which is literally the most... <laughs> breakneck pace comedy you'll probably ever see in your life uh the film that was so fast-paced that uh, Cagney uh really considered and actually did retire for quite some time uh, really until he did ragtime in the early 80s um but this is a blistering political cold war satire about uh the Pepsi Cola representative uh, in Berlin in the middle of the Cold War as the wall is going up. Uh, it, you don't even really want to describe the plot of this film because it's very difficult to, but uh, it, it's so rewarding just going in cold and then uh, unlocking all the facets of it with multiple rewatches over the years. 
So this has a wonderful booklet, the original poster art, and then nice art on the reverse. The rear there. This is one of Wilder's most underrated pictures, I think. I, I had always wanted to see it growing up. I read about it, and then when I finally did see it, I <laughs> practically burst a gut laughing. Uh, but it's got a real wit to it, and it's just a film I adore. It's a it's a masterpiece. It really is. Um, I, I I really do actually prefer it to Some Like It Hot. Um, it's so underrated, and you get all of the great. Uh, Cold War paranoia that was really exploding at the time, uh, right in the midst of one of the most breakneck comedies you'll ever see in your life. I do have the Kino Lorber version, which it's the same master, uh, has the same audio commentary. Uh, it's got the trailer, so does this, but again, the encoding on here is much better. Uh, so I've always been wanting to get the Masters of Cinema Wilder titles. Uh, I've still got to get their releases of Irma LaDuce and uh, Private Life of Sherlock Holmes especially, which is a great favorite of mine. But uh, this one just popped up for super cheap, and uh, it's gotten difficult to import titles. Um, Masters of Cinema still, uh, if you order from their site, still ships for free. But uh, international shipping has gotten very difficult since the pandemic started, so I really had to back off on, on getting all of the titles that I've been meaning to. Uh, but again, this one just popped up for cheap. And anytime I find a Eureka MOC title in the wild or, you know, with free shipping from, you know, a group sale or something, I'm like, okay, sign me up, please. I'll take one. Um, so, yeah, this is an upgrade for, for this one. I don't know if I'm going to hang on to it. Uh, it does have... Uh, one or two extra bits of a Wilder interview, but I believe they're all from the uh, Volker, I never know how to pronounce his name, but the Volker Schlorndorf, uh long interview pieces, which are compiled into a documentary as well. But yeah, I guess I'll have to keep both. Plus it does have uh, the uh, alternate poster artwork on this. Then you get a version of the uh, poster art with the lady figure there. So it is one of the handful of Kino discs that does have reversible cover art. So this next film is a film I swore to myself I had no reason to ever buy because growing up I always hated musicals and never could get into them. Uh, this one in particular because everybody loved it and I never could get into it. Um, but... Uh, I have wanted to get the Blu-ray and look at the restoration again. Uh, I remember all the reviews coming out saying it looked fantastic, plus it's large format, plus it was directed by Robert Wise. It's got the pedigree. Uh, but also, I've been reading Christopher Plummer's autobiography, which uh, is really fantastic of course uh when he recently passed away i had been had it on my to read shelf for a while and just you know immediately pulled it off started reading it uh and it's absolutely fantastic so it's made me want to go through and and see all of his films all over again so of course i was like well i finally need to look at you know what and sure enough uh this was just in the bins at the local stores and i think it was definitely mispriced because i looked at it and i'm like well, I know there are multiple releases of The Sound of Music, but I swear that looks like the ultra spiffy one with the extra documentary disc and stuff. And lo and behold, it actually was. So I picked up the 50th anniversary Sound of Music, uh, complete with the uh, bonus documentary feature disc and the wonderful embossed slipcover, the really nice art. This condenses everything from the really large uh, multiple disc swag box set uh, that originally premiered with the Blu-ray. But again this nice slip box and then you get one of the extra thick blu-ray amore style cases because this is a five disc set uh, again basically you're getting the uh two discs from the original blu-ray with the feature film the restoration all the special features uh then you get the dvd disc which is the third disc uh disc four is the all new blu-ray which has yeah let me make sure yeah, it's, it's an hour-long documentary with Julie Andrews, so that's the exclusive part of this. And then it also includes the CD soundtrack, which I believe is also the 50th anniversary version. I don't know if it's 100% complete, uh, but they tucked that in here as well. Show you the rear. Now, the only problem with this is that uh, because it's one of these cases with the discs and the hinges like this, uh, usually the disc on the front or the back here, the CD, uh, usually becomes a floater so uh, because the hub is so thin 
So when I picked this up, I could actually hear something rattling around. And sure enough, it was the CD, uh, which does have a number of scuffs and scratches. So um, I'm going to test it to see if I can get it to um, do a good rip on uh, exact audio copy, which is the way I test all my used CDs. But um, that's unfortunate. But all the other discs are fine. And for the price I found this for, which I could not believe, again, I know this had to have been mispriced uh, simply because this is all still like a, a, a $39.99 release has really nice art on the reverse sleeve there so again you have dvd then the three blu-ray discs and then the unfortunately scuffed up cd the, the problem is always they make these hubs way too thin but yeah, um, I was happy to finally find this, and I couldn't believe this was $2. Um, so again, I, I think this just got mispriced and mixed in. Um, one, of, one of my local stores is quite large, is the McKay's Books, which of course I've done videos about before. Um, but they have a really large bargain section uh, with DVDs as low as a quarter and going up to like, you know, 3 to $5. But uh, occasionally I think some things get mispriced and mislabeled. So I think they just thought this was the standard one or the DVD, whoever was pricing it. And uh, I just looked at it and I'm like, if this, this is, I believe this is what I think it is. So I'm like, uh, is this really the sticker on it? Yes, it is. Okay. Well, uh, I guess they knew <laughs> I was, I had sound, sound of music on the brain since I'm reading uh, Christopher Plummer's autobiography. So this was a really welcome and fortuitous find for me. And then last for the Blu-rays, returning to Warner Archive. Even though this isn't marked as a Warner Archive title on the actual um, cover, it is a Warner Archive title, so I don't know why that is. Um, but this is actually something I've always wanted to see. It's not a film. It's actually a television miniseries, uh, so it runs a little over three hours. But uh, it's from 1973, which is Bill Holden in The Blue Knight, which is a pretty well-regarded, darker cop drama for television. Again, it is technically a miniseries i guess because it runs just over three hours but you get this wonderful blu-ray presentation in hd with lossless mono and there you can see it is a warner archive uh, marked uh, disc so i guess this was just earlier on and they didn't put it on the cover um it's 2018 but it's been my wish list ever since it came out so yeah, this was really nice to just find on the regular store shelves, which rarely have any boutique discs ever. And then last but certainly not least, uh, this I also picked up at uh, the local store's sidewalk sale. Uh, usually they have a bunch of CDs, and uh, every once in a while you might find a soundtrack here and there. Usually more more common stuff like Braveheart or um, one of the many uh, songs from or inspired by the movie uh, for, uh, 90s CD soundtracks, which are basically just uh, label samplers for whoever the label was who was tied to the film. But uh, every once in a while you do find CD soundtracks, and this one was sticking out, and I'm like... Are you serious? Uh, so I picked up, finally, uh, the CD soundtrack score for Kingdom of Heaven, which is one of my favorite films of the modern age. I think the the long, proper, long version, they call it the director's cut, but it's really the original cut of the film, the four-hour version. Uh, it's... My second favorite Ridley Scott picture behind Blade Runner. Uh, it's uh, just an incredible film if you've never seen it. And I know people aren't always necessarily fans of Orlando Bloom as an actor, but uh, he does well in the film and uh, definitely see it. I know four hours sounds like a long time, but uh, it's, it's basically Gladiator on steroids with much more intelligence. And I like Gladiator very much, but I think Gladiator still gets all the spotlight when Kingdom of Heaven is the much better film. Uh, so it's it's an incredible film. Uh, it's one of the more, well, I should say one of the truest films about the Crusades period and really tries to go into greater depth. It really is an old-fashioned historical epic film with a long runtime. Uh, they did finally reissue it on Blu-ray. Some versions do have an overture and add an intermission, which really, again, harking back to the feeling of, yes, this is a historical epic film of the classic, you know, 50s and 60s period. I have always wanted to get the soundtrack, just never gotten around to it. Uh, it's just a single disc, but again, it was just really amazing to find this in the sidewalk sale, because usually it's just uh, the stuff that has never sold, um, but occasionally stuff gets pulled out of the back and just mixed in like this, so I was like... Yes, they knew I was coming. So that's it for this video. Um, again, not something I planned to do, but uh, just so many interesting things popped up. And again, 
did not expect there to be just an entire collection brought into one of the local stores and just see like a whole shelf of Warner Archive titles and just, you know, have the eyes open wide moment uh, right before me. So um, just so many titles all at once. It, I felt it really deserved its own video. And it always goes to show you, you don't know what's going to turn up at just even your regular local haunts. And I haven't been going into stores as, as much as as, uh, as I would normally because, of course, uh, with COVID and the pandemic going on and things just really now starting to open up more, I've, I've really just not been doing all that much on the collecting front outside of the occasional eBay package or something from the uh, from somebody in the Laserdisc group or somebody I know. So uh, it's really cool to find uh, titles and, of course, sad that it was somebody's uh, collection that they obviously passed away and then somebody had to uh, you know bring it into the local store to, to part out or just bring the whole thing in but I'm happy to give these discs a new home and uh, actually crack some of them open get the plastic off and uh, really help me dig further into the Warner Archive uh, MOD DVD line which is something I've been meaning to do for ages I, I have a couple uh, but now I have much more of an actual shelf and again I plan on going back and trying to get a few more of those before they all get uh, the rest get cherry picked so uh, again hopefully uh, you've enjoyed this video uh, hopefully it's been informative and and fun and you know uh, as always comment on uh, any discs you find of, on your own or any of these you're interested in or, or want to know more about uh, so as always thank you so very much for watching keep physical media alive keep your discs spinning and always support your local media stores